Hello and welcome to yet another one of my game pickups videos where this time we're going to be going through all of the games that I picked up in May, June and July 2021. Obviously July isn't quite over yet but to be honest I don't really plan on picking up any new games this month but if I do end up doing that I'll just include them in the next pickups video. So let's kick off the video properly by talking about the first game that I picked up all the way at the beginning of May and this one I actually got for my birthday which is on the 2nd of May and it's Pikmin 2 for the GameCube. Now to be honest I don't really actually have a lot to say about this and the reason for that is that I've not played it yet. Uh, the reason that I've not played it is because I'm planning on doing a Pikmin marathon so I'll be reviewing all four of the games that have been released in that series so far and the reason that I want to do that is because I actually think based on what I've played anyway the Pikmin series is massively underrated and I can't believe that I hadn't even played them up until fairly recently. Uh, I played the first Pikmin for the first ever time earlier this year and I was really blown away by how much I enjoyed it. Uh, so after I finished that for the first time I then wanted to get all of the other games in the series because I knew at some point I was going to want to talk about them. But then I discovered that Pikmin 2 is actually really expensive. Well, I say really expensive, I guess it's not like that expensive. Uh, but here in the UK it's around £60, which is quite pricey for an older game like this. Uh, so yeah, I waited until my birthday and I got it for that. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to give this a go because supposedly from what I've read online, this one is supposed to be the best one. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to see how this improves on the first game. The next game I picked up in May was none other than Resident Evil Village for the PS5. Uh, so this was my fourth PS5 game and I'm building up quite a decent library for that console now actually. I've pretty much got all of the main exclusives on it. Uh, so I've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, Sackboy, uh, Demon Souls of course, and now I've got Resident Evil Village. Uh, so yeah, quite an impressive library. I kind of wish that more games were coming out for it a little bit quicker, uh, but these games take a long time to develop, so I guess it's understandable that there's not that many out for the console yet. Uh, but anyway, Resident Evil Village. Uh, to be honest, I don't really know why I didn't do a video on this. Uh, because uh, obviously I played it when it first came out so I could have quite easily done a video on it uh, but to be honest in the back of my mind I think the reason that I didn't want to do that is because I've had this idea to do this big Resident Evil review marathon one day so I guess I didn't want to talk about it now when I wanted to talk about it in a big marathon but who knows if that'll e even ever happen I mean there's so many games in the Resident Evil series at this point that would be a pretty massive undertaking. But yeah, what did I think about this game specifically? Well, I actually really, really enjoyed it. It's got a good mixture of like things taken from Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7, and it blends those two styles very well, I think. Uh, so it's got like the elements of like campiness from Resident Evil 4, but then it has these sections that are almost like a little bit more serious and more horror focused from Resident Evil 7. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a good horror game to play that doesn't take itself too seriously, I would probably say that this is the one you're looking for. The last game that I picked up in May, I think this one was more towards the end of May actually, uh, was none other than L.A. Noir, the remaster that's available on like PS4, Xbox One and uh, I'm pretty sure PC. In fact, this is also on the Switch, a bit of a weird game to be on the Switch, but there we go. I don't know if it's a good port or not, but... It's there if you want to play it portably, I guess. So the reason I picked this game up is because at the time I was watching quite a lot of like detective shows uh, or like mystery shows, I guess. Like I was watching the Death Note anime again and uh, I was watching a program called Line of Duty that's uh, pretty popular in the UK, or at least it was when it was on. Uh, and I just wanted a game that sort of like captured that whole like detective thing. And I have played this before on the PS3, and I remember it being really good, so I figured why not get the remaster and play it again. I mean, it has been quite a while, so I've pretty much forgotten like everything about the storyline at this point, so I'm kind of experiencing it fresh, if you know what I mean. Uh, but, 
I would probably say that it's not aged as well as I thought it had. Uh, there's quite a few like elements that feel a little bit clunky by today's standards. Uh, not really anything to do with the graphics or anything, because I still think that they look like pretty decent, especially obviously because it's been remastered. Uh, but it's more so just to do with the gameplay. Uh, like, there's moments where you're like interrogating people or questioning people, and uh, sometimes you'll like choose a dialogue option, but then he'll deliver that dialogue option in a way that you didn't hint intend him to, like he'll be like way too like intimidating um, or something like that and it just won't play out like you wanted it to. Or alternatively a couple of times, uh, like I wanted to ask a certain question but that question wasn't there, so again I had to take the conversation in a different way to what I would have. And it's just a little bit immersion breaking when that sort of thing happens. But other than that, I would probably still say that this is quite a good game. If you're looking for something that has like elements of mystery and like where you kind of like role play as like a detective who solves like murders and like uh, tons of other things as well. Like you start the game lower down the chain, so you're just like helping out with uh, like arson and... Um, uh, like traffic and stuff but yeah it's got quite a lot of variety in that way in terms of the stuff that you're actually doing uh, but yeah I just I just think it's maybe a, a little bit clunky I feel like if they did a sequel now it would probably be a lot lot better than this original game but still worth checking out if you're into the tone of it my first pickup for the month of June is Resident Evil Revelations 2 for the PS4 uh, now, the Revelation series I'm actually not too familiar with at all, and uh, I kind of wanted to get them just to like see what they were all about, because at this point I had just finished playing Resident Evil Village, and I was just in the mood to play more Resident Evil stuff that I hadn't played before. Uh, so yeah, I heard that Revelations 1 and 2 were good. Uh, couldn't get my hands on Revelations 1, just because it wasn't in any of the shops I was visiting, but I did track down one copy of Revelations 2, which is what I'm holding in my hand. Now, just like with Pikmin 2 though, I can't really talk too much about this because I've not played it yet. I've had so many other games to be playing and like so many things I'm playing for videos that are going to be coming out soon that I've just not really had the time to dive into this yet. Uh, when I do dive into it, I'm probably going to play it in co-op, uh, just because I feel like that's the intended way of experiencing it. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a good co-op game, I'm sure that this will deliver. Uh, I mean, I've played Resident Evil 5, and that's an excellent co-op game, so if this is anything like that, you're sure to have a good time with it. A little bit later in the month, I picked up potentially the biggest PS5 game to date, which is, of course, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This is sort of like the first PS5 game that's like truly a PS5 game because obviously like Demon's Souls is a remake of a PS3 game, uh, Sackboy is also on PS4, uh, Resident Evil Village is also on PS4, Miles Morales is also on PS4. So yeah, this is the first true original exclusive PS5 game. Pretty insane that it's taken this long to really get a game like that out. But, here we are. I did do a little video on this that will probably go further into my opinion of the game, so if you're interested in knowing more about what I thought about it, you can always check that out. Uh, but, briefly, I really, really liked this. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the original Ratchet & Clank games, personally, just because I kind of feel like they had a little bit more charm, and I feel like they had a little bit more variety as well. Uh, but this is a very, very good game and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I still haven't gone through it on the New Game Plus mode yet, which I'm uh, told is uh, adds quite a lot of content to the game. Uh, like it adds the bolt multiplier and stuff like that that kind of changes the way that you play the game a bit. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that at some point. When I do that, I'll probably do it on the hardest difficulty as well, just to give the game a little bit more of a challenge. For my next pickup in June, you're gonna notice a little bit of a pattern developing here, because just like with Resident Evil Village, when I finished that, I ended up getting Revelations 2. The same thing happened with Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, where after playing it, I went out and I got one of the older games in the series, but the one I actually picked up is quite a weird one, 
because it's the PS2 port of Ratchet & Clank Size Matters, which is of course the PSP game. Now the reason that I got this on the PS2 rather than the PSP is firstly because I don't actually have a PSP so it would be pretty pointless me doing that, but more importantly than that, the reason I wanted it on the PS2 is because I do plan on one day doing a big Ratchet & Clank review marathon. Uh, for those of you that have been around for an extremely long time, uh, you might recall that I did actually start a Ratchet & Clank review marathon, but that was before I was uh, like fully invested in making videos, so those old reviews were actually on my old blog. Uh, so yeah, I, I got two games in and then I just never ended up reviewing the third one. Uh, I did play it for the review though, uh, so yeah, I did formulate my opinion of it and everything, but I never actually wrote it in blog form. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to revisiting those early games because I do have very fond memories of them. Uh, and I'm looking forward to playing some of these more weird ones for the first time ever. Uh, I am looking to get Secret Agent Clank on PS2 as well, but the issue with that is that Secret Agent Clank for some reason is stupidly expensive. Uh, like, more expensive than Pikmin 2 on the GameCube is. Uh, like, sometimes you see that listed on eBay for like over £100, which is just insane and I'm not going to pay that much. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to see if I can get my hands on that somehow. Uh, it might just be a case of me missing that game out and then like coming back to it uh, to in order to cover it like after I've covered some of the PS3 games or something uh, but who knows and to be honest I don't even want to make any promises that I'm going to be reviewing all of the Ratchet and Clank games just in case it never happens but I do intend on doing that I intend on doing probably starting that before the end of the year uh, but we'll see who knows the next game that I picked up in June was Psychonauts for the PS2. Uh, obviously with the new game coming out soon, I kind of figured that I might as well get this and do a review of it and then review the new one when that comes out, but my plan to do that kind of just fell apart. Uh, I started playing this and I didn't really get that into it. I kind of feel that maybe I made a mistake getting the PS2 version because I imagine that the PC version just runs a lot better. Uh, but yeah, basically I was just having real big problems with the frame rate of this game and it was really like making it difficult to play. I did give it a big chance though, I, like, I played quite a lot of the game to be honest, uh, suffering through the horrible frame rate. Uh, I, I must have got about like, I must have got to the third proper level. Um, but yeah, I was enjoying it, which is why I'm saying that I probably should have got the PC version or maybe like the Xbox version might run better or something. Uh, but yeah, it's it just doesn't seem like a very good version of the game, to be honest. So maybe one day I'll get the PC version and then revisit it. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a shame, to be honest, because like I say, I was enjoying it, and it did have a lot of good things going for it. Very original and quite funny at times. But yeah, just just not a great version from my experience. Now, the final games I'm going to be talking about in this video are the ones that I've picked up at the beginning of July. And with these, I'm going to have to blur them, and the reason that I'm going to blur these is simply because I am working on a video uh, covering all of these. Uh, there's actually more games in this series than what I'm holding up here, but uh, yeah, I, I've gone a little bit crazy with this series, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to get these videos out that I'm working on, because it's something a little bit different to what I would normally do. I wouldn't really say that it was me straight up reviewing these games, uh, but I, gu I guess I am. I guess it's just like I'm reviewing them in a different way to what I normally would. So um, yeah, I hope you're looking forward to these mystery videos that I'm working on. Hopefully it won't be too long until they're up. I'm, I'm planning on making the first video of this tackling this particular series. Uh, I'm planning on making that go live after this video. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you don't have to wait too long and hopefully nothing goes wrong with the video making progress that delays it. Uh, but yeah, sorry that I can't go into more detail about this, but I want to keep it as a bit of a surprise. But yeah, that sums up everything that I've picked up throughout the months of May, June and July. 
there's quite a few games that I've picked up with the intention of making videos about them and then I just haven't made videos about them, which is a little bit annoying because I don't normally do that. Normally when I start making a video, I finish it. Uh, but yeah, just recently for some reason I've been struggling to get into like a rhythm with that. Uh, but yeah, the next video is a part of a three-part series and I'm really excited to be working on that, so hopefully that'll motivate me to get these videos out faster, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, let me know in the comments what your pickups have been for these three months, and let me know what your one favourite thing has been that you've picked up as well. I'd probably say out of everything that I've got, the thing that I'm most excited to play is Pikmin 2. Uh, and like I say, I am going to review the Pikmin series at some point, but that'll probably be after this like mystery series that I'm working on. Uh, but yeah, I hope you're excited for that. I hope you're excited for the mystery series as well that I'm working on. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!